Yeah. Fueled by C4, Cellucor, and Extend. Use the code Clydesdale to get 20% off the checkout at C4Energy.com. On Clydesdale Media, where we bring you the widest array of content here on our YouTube channel. Make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. Hit that notifier so you first know when new episodes are available. What is going on, everybody? Welcome to the Clydesdale Media Podcast, where we are featuring the athletes from the 2023 CrossFit Games semifinals. And with us this afternoon is Alessandro Zanet. Yes, got it. No, honestly, it usually doesn't happen on the first time, but yeah. Okay. Tried to get my inner Italian to come out and make sure I got it just right. Hey, man, I can see it. I can feel it, and I'm loving it. All right, cool. So... Uh, Alessandro is joining us live from Southern California, as you can tell by the backdrop, giving us all the cool vibes of where oh, yeah. this competition is going to go down in five weeks. Yes, uh, May 26th, so about, about five-ish weeks. Yeah, we're approaching that, that marker. Yeah, so I did some research on you, and I want to I mm-hmm. start in the Wayback Machine. Okay, right. cool. and and I read that that your father is a direct immigrant from Italy. Yes, and that he he owned a gym when you were a kid. Correct. Yes. Yeah. So, growing up, uh, we're pretty lucky. I got to be honest. We're where I grew up in Concord, California, is right outside of Santa Cruz. We're about maybe forty five minutes driving with traffic. So we're we were right there when Greg Glassman and you know opened up the first box. Um, before he actually opened up his gym, we were part of the original Diablo CrossFit. And a lot of people don't know this because Diablo is now this giant. I mean, you know, it's on the same level as like an Invictus where it's just an institution. Um, but I was there when it was a box and it was a, le- a legitimate. There's a Volkswagen and I'm pretty sure it's still there. A Volkswagen car uh, lot in a city called Walnut Creek. And there were some storage units in the back that you could rent. And it was the definition of a box. It was just two guy, two young teenagers that had just gone out of college uh, that were interested in hopping on the CrossFit movement. And one thing led to another. So my understanding is the way you kind of got into fitness was your, your parents would go to the gym and take the dog. And yeah. if you didn't want to go, you were left home alone. Yep, pretty much. My, my parents were very much like a, you either do it or you don't kind of a thing and uh being an only child that was you know that was kind of how it was and so yeah you got it right my parents used to go to the gym back when my dad owned one and uh they would take the dog and so i'd wake up at like i feel like nine o'clock was a pretty reasonable wake up time but i used to wake up at 9 a.m and i'm like it's really quiet like nobody's here and and to be honest with you i i I got really sick of it and so i decided to tag along with them and see what it was all about and uh as you can see, uh, kind of kept going. So, yeah, yeah. So you you played competitive soccer growing up. Yeah, I did. And and how uh, long, how long did you do that? So I played officially until eighteen years old, right before college. Um, I went to Boston University, and so both the the women's and the men's teams are Division One. Uh, the women's team was a lot better. Like they were actually winning NCAA championships, whereas the men were kind of scraping by. Uh, but I didn't get in for sports. So I did a walk-on tryout and I made the team. Uh, but I had to stay on the practice squad because I was going to school for theater, for acting. And if you don't get in for uh, sports, I sadly found out that they don't really work around your schedule. So I, I really wasn't able to stay um, Honestly, I, I didn't even stay until the end of the, the freshman year uh, in college level, at least. Hey, that's a that's a great club. I I was a swimmer, went to my freshman year, didn't make it through the full season. Uh, hey, it's a good good club to be a part of. Hey, at least we tried, you know, at least we, we tried to make it work. Right, right. So so then there's a, a transfer to you becoming uh, more involved in CrossFit, maybe coaching. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and how did that story develop? Um, you know, uh, 
getting into the coaching side was, I mean, I think everybody that does CrossFit knows this. Uh, it, it's really, really difficult. Uh, it's very challenging. And I think the one thing that's kind of kept me interested is no matter how good you get, there's always something that will humble you, regardless of what the weights or the, uh, the rep scheme is. And I just have always remembered what it felt like when I first stepped into the gym and I wanted to always help people not feel the way that I felt kind of a thing. Not like it was a, a negative uh, first first time for me, but it was definitely a shock to the system in terms of how your body feels, um, the atmosphere of it all. You know, nine times out of ten, the music is blaring. Everyone else seems to know what they're doing already, and you're kind of there like, uh, I, I just thought this was like a group class, like a high-intensity interval training. Um, so I really just wanted to pass down the same knowledge that I had acquired from watching my own coaches, from becoming competitive as well. And, uh, yeah, and, and now I'm uh, lucky to be co-owner here at K2 CrossFit in uh, Los Angeles's historic Koreatown, and I haven't looked back since. But there's a story there where you reached out for – um, to be a coach and then yeah. k2 really gave you some opportunities k2 gave me all the opportunities i'll be honest with you um so i for the majority of my working years uh because after the gym my father got really heavily involved in uh, managing restaurants specifically being the general manager so you know the a little higher than just the everyday manager and and also having the Italian uh, background, I always worked as a waiter at Italian restaurants. So when I moved here to LA, I told myself I didn't want to do that anymore. I, I didn't enjoy being a waiter. I had some really bad experiences working in San Francisco with just people that weren't very fun to be with. So I told myself that I would make coaching and, and being an athlete full time. And I think I sent out an I sent, I mean, I'll be honest, I sent out the same email. I just kind of copied and pasted people's names, but I sent that email to, a, I think, at least 15 gyms all throughout uh, Los Angeles. And Kevin, who's now my business partner, uh, was one of the one of two that actually replied and actually gave me a chance. Um, and after about a year of working at the other gym that had also contacted me, I kind of gave both of them an ultimatum where I was like, Hey, I don't want to be one or the other. I would like to be all in at one gym. And Kevin immediately offered me, uh, more, uh, classes and a wider scope of, of jobs that I could make a little more money here at K2 and the other, the other place basically thrust me off. And so I knew from there that, that it was going to be all or nothing with K2. And, and it, it's been like that since. So Kevin played an integral role in who you are today. Um, oh, yeah. And do you feel like now as his partner, business partner, that you need to pay that forward at all? Oh, totally. Oh, to yeah. I mean, uh, I think the number one thing that I struggle with right now with some of my coaches is, uh, and I'm not going to name names if you guys are watching, um, is just some of the everyday things that I did – because I knew the opportunities that I was given and I, and I did want to repay, you know, it's like the little things like making sure everything's up kept, um, making sure I can make Kevin's life as stress-free as possible, to be honest, making, making sure the gym is looking nice, running smoothly. And it, that's definitely something that I'm still doing now that we're partners um, because he's opened up like more of a, a recovery uh, studio close by down the street. And so, He's a lot more hands-on there, whereas I'm a lot more hands-on here. So, you know, making sure that things are going well here at K2, that he doesn't even have to check in and, and know that things are going well is, is my goal for, for, for all the stuff that he's given me. So let's look at, at Alessandro, the competitor. You, you did your first Open in 2014, took a little bit of time off. Yeah. Yeah. And then started back in 2017. Right. And then every year since, pretty much, with yes. incremental growth and improvement over those years. Thank, thank goodness. Yeah. Um. 
So the 2014, yeah, it, it's weird. It shows up on the on the K, on the CrossFit page as like like NA or didn't finish or something. And I, I really don't remember what that was about. I think that was a year where I just signed up to sign up. Um, back when I was, I think like a teenager at Diablo. I remember I attended one of the first CrossFit games at the ranch. And back when they were back before they were like age groups, there was a 16 year old girl who had deadlifted 200 plus pounds. And I remember being there and my dad looked at me and he's like, can you deadlift 200 pounds? And I was like, I don't think I can. <laughs> so I, so I, I trained really hard and I signed up for the open that year, but I don't think anything came of it. Um, but yes, ever since 2017, the goal has been, I mean, it's changed so much since then. It's been, it was regionals back then, then it became sanctionals and now it's semifinals and I hope it stays this way for a little bit. Um, but we'll see. But, but I told myself pretty early on, as long as I was improving and as long as I felt like my body could hold up and continue, I would still keep going. Um, and I'm lucky I'm still pretty young. Most, you know, 28, uh, started pretty late in my athletic career and, I've seen a lot of people go to the games at like 32, 33. So I'm still very hopeful. Um, it's still very much in the, in the back of my mind to make it to the, to the CrossFit games. So I want to come back to that, but one mm -hmm. of our listeners has a question and he's yep. an LA guy. So oh, this nice. is a very specific question. Okay. Um, it is, it's from Wad Zombie. I don't know if you know who that is. He does mean. He on actually Instagram. just followed me on Instagram like five minutes ago. I saw the notification. I go, man. So it says, what is the Korean lecture part it shows on some of your CrossFit classes? The Korean lecture. Uh, good question, because that's like, that is a lot of the questions that we get. Um, so being in Koreatown, uh, it's, it's something that I struggle with, too, is we, we do definitely get a lot of people from Korea who have just moved to the States, like barely, if any, English. So we decided that we didn't have a class at the 8 a.m. or 3 p.m. time slot as it is. And we thought it might be a good idea to add a time slot where we had a bilingual uh, coach who is uh, Coach Yuna Lee. And she does an amazing job. She speaks English perfectly. She speaks Korean as her native tongue. And uh, it's open to everyone uh, because, like I said, it is taught in both languages. But we did want to have an option for those people uh, that, that didn't feel so comfortable speaking English that just had moved here to the United States and uh, CrossFit's terrifying. Moving to a new country is terrifying, especially if you don't speak the language. So we thought, why not make it a little easier for these people? So, and they're, they're packed. They're packed. There's a lot of, a lot of people. And it, it's great to see the, the multicultural diversity that we have at K2, not just being born in America, whether that's, you know, of diverse cultures, the uh, nationalities right there, but also the, the Korean people that we do get. Uh, straight from Korea. So it's, it's, it's really nice. So he sums up what I was thinking. Oh shit. That's actually really oh, cool. nice. I see it now. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so again, like you're in Koreatown, right? Yeah. It only makes sense that you, that you, um, your gym is, is built to serve those in your community, right? Oh, that's what CrossFit's 100%. It's all about. Oh, uh, yes, 100%. It is about community. You know, fitness and community are the number one. And the number, I would say they're both number one, in, in my opinion, uh, in terms of just not running a successful business or a successful gym, but making sure that people are happy. You know, I mean, especially if you open up a place in Koreatown. Like if you if when you come here in Pasadena, if you're you're more than welcome to stop by, you'll notice 99% of the signs in Koreatown are in Korean. Um, like it's, there's no joke here. This it's, it's the biggest Korean population outside of Korea. And you see it on every street corner. Like there's everything like we even have on our sign, um, our proposal where it introduces people, uh, to CrossFit. It's in English, Korean, and in Spanish. We have a huge Salvadorian presence in the surrounding neighborhoods of Koreatown. And we have uh, Coach Vanessa, who speaks uh, fluent Spanish. She's born and raised in Mexico. So we, we, try to, we try to diversify. You know, why, why make it less inclusive in something that already is so scary, you know? Right. And I think you hit that nail on the head. 
CrossFit alone is scary. Moving to a new country is scary. Why not make it as easy as possible for people yeah. to take advantage of this opportunity? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, you know, I'll be honest with you. I might be one of the owners, but there are some times where I can't communicate with somebody and I'll be like, and it's really nice to have Coach Yuna or a couple of our coaches that can speak uh, Korean. We have one coach that speaks Russian if we need it. We have uh, one that speaks Spanish. Yeah. And then we got me that speaks Italian. So we got we got four languages. We got four or five languages. Is, so hopefully one of them you'll be able to speak when you come in. Awesome. Well, I speak all of those foods, but I don't speak the languages very well. Yes, I agree with that. Heck yeah, I hear that one. <laughs> all right. So, um, so back to you and you're 28. Mm -hmm. You're making your first ever appearance in a CrossFit semifinal. How cool is that, that this incremental growth, these bricks that you've been laying for year after year after year, all of a sudden have paved a path that you're a semifinalist. I mean, I, 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 I can't zoom in right now, but I have goosebumps just thinking about it. I'll be honest with you. It's, this has never been, this is, this, it's fun. Don't get me wrong. I love it. It's fun, but it is, it is a passion. It is a passion. And it, and there are many times I make a joke to some of my members when they see me lying on the floor, they're like, I'll be like, man, I could have chosen bowling. Bowling is, is not as difficult. It definitely doesn't make you feel like this a much easier sport. And, and there are, there are a lot of times, um, and I, I feel like I don't hear it a lot from some of the bigger athletes talk about there are a lot of times where you just don't, we don't want to do it anymore. It's, it's hard. It is hard work. Um, and I have every step of the way had somebody, a friend or family that has been like, you have come this far. Why are you going to stop now? You're so close. This, this year, I'll be honest with you, a lot of my members who are really good friends of mine told me every day, you're a semifinals athlete. You're a semifinals athlete. Like, stop worrying about it. And this was before the Open had even started. And and I'd be like, ha, ah, ha, ha, yeah, yeah. You know, like, of course I have, you know, but it's it's not official until you get that that official stamp of approval from HQ when you get that email. And it's honestly, it's like, it's the best, it's the greatest feeling I've, I've felt, uh, in the 28 years of my life. And I fought back a lot of tears right now in, in that monologue. Um, it, it's, I, I'm just going to take it every, every day is going to be a, honestly a gift. And, uh, I'm going to try and live the moments to the fullest, man. I'm uh, cause you, you don't know about next year. So I'm just going to enjoy it while I can. So, I'm I'm gonna try to bring more tears out now, and my friend my friend Wad Zombies right in my in my kitchen for questions. Okay, it's your first year, and it's in Pasadena. Oh yeah, oh you you know how much pressure there was. You know how many how many times Kevin used to come up because so so before I transitioned to Mayhem Athlete, Kevin was my coach, and he still very much is my coach. Uh, we still talk a lot outside of just running a gym, but he. He was like, dude, it's in Pasadena this year. This is our backyard. And I was like, I know, I know, I get it. Like, I just, everybody, everybody back up for a second because it's, it's already stressful enough. And he's like, this is, you know, and, and he's a big sports guy. And he's like, this is, this would be home field advantage. Our gym is here. You're from here. This has got to be the year. Um, so it really does feel like everything stacked up, but I'll be honest with you. There's been a lot of negatives uh, in my own personal life that is going to get the tears out probably more. Um, and it really kind of feels like this is the universe finally giving me something back. Just year after year, it's just been, ah, you got me, man. You got me. It's, it's, I'm not a super religious person, but it is a blessing. It is a blessing to, to have lived through the things, to be living through those things, but to know that there's something, there's something worth, worth working for. And, um, yeah, you got me, you got me, man. You got me. Good job. So I, I am a super religious person. So like, 
I, I would pray. I'm going to pray for you, man, because this is an amazing opportunity. And yeah, I, I got this. Is, is my it's my grandfather's chain on my father's side who passed away. Um, and I said, I'm not a religious person, but it helps me uh, rem remember him. So. So the good part about this, let's go happy now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you are probably the closest athlete, according to Nick. Um, you're probably the closest athlete to this competition. Yep. You will probably have the biggest cheer squad oh, in the building. I freaking hope so. We've got like 30 people so far, maybe even, maybe almost. I'm, I'm trying to get it to 50. I want to fill out an entire section with, uh, we have come up with blue, blue and red shirts um, that say my last name on the front and then it has the 44 which is where i qualified in the quarterfinals for the semifinals and i just i want to look in the crowd and i just want to see a sea of blue because we're literally like 25 minutes from pasadena's convention center so yeah i want i want that place i want that place rocking yeah and, and it's going to be the coolest thing like i'm going to be do some, doing some documentary stuff there and I'm taking a note down that I am going to get some footage of your cheer squad. Oh, heck yeah. Uh, for this. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And then you won't even have to point it out. You, you will hear them. We did, uh, I did the fittest experience a couple years back and I think like 20 people from the gym came and made the trip all the way out to Austin, Texas. And, and a couple of times the announcers were like, Whoa, I don't know who this Alessandro guy is, but he's got a huge cheer squad. And that's, that's all community. That's all community right there. You know, like, they, they will show up and they will show up loud. Yeah. It sounds like you and Kevin are all about like, what's cool is like you have given so much to your community, right? Kevin gave yeah. a lot to you. You in turn have given a lot to the community and now it's yeah. time to get a little bit back from them. Yep. And it's, and it's going to be yeah. cool to see. I am very much, I tell people all the time, I'm very much someone who doesn't, I don't get nervous in competitions. Um, and if anything, I'm definitely one of those people that the louder the crowd is, the more I will pull something from the deepest bowels of my energy reserves. And I will pull something out if I have to, 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 to not only do my best, but put on a show. I mean, at the end of the day, it is a sport. It is entertainment. And these people came to see people exercise really, really fast. Yeah. It's funny, as I, as I was researching you, I was thinking, looking at your story and looking at your gym name, right, K2, that's a big mountain, right, to climb? That's the most it's dangerous noticed. mountain. It's, it's killed the most people. Right. And that's what your career looks like. It is a incremental climb up this mountain. And, I, and here you are at, at the pinnacle, right at the peak in your hometown, yep. 20 minutes away. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, I'll be honest with you. It is my first semifinals. So there's a part of me that's like, let's go F some stuff up. Let's like really just absolutely give it a swing. Um, so, you know, my, my main goal is I want to be in that top 30. I want to be in that top 30. Uh, I believe I can be in that top 30. And I really just, I want someone to leave that convention center that doesn't know me and say, Holy crap. Who's that guy? You know, that that's what I want. I want to I want to show people, OK, I'm going to see him next year and he's going to be higher up on that leaderboard. So now I want to move in, in the article I read about you. You gave a lot of props to your dad. And, yes. And what he instilled in you. Is he going to yeah. be able to be at the semis? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank goodness. But my both my parents will be there. Uh, my mom is able to make it with um, one of my aunties, one of her sisters. Uh, they'll be there the whole weekend. My dad uh, will be there, I believe, Saturday and Sunday due to due to work. Um, but yes, they will be there. I have a lot of people that are actually flying in from Boston, from Florida, from the Bay Area, and they're going to be staying with me. So I'm going to have a packed apartment full of, and I told these people, I was like, if you're going to stay with me, you need to bring the energy because I am going to be very depleted and I'm going to be feeding off you guys. And, uh, they've, these people have shown up in the past for my competitions from Wadapalooza and, and onward. And, and they have, 
they have definitely not uh, let me down. So I'm, I'm very excited. So you've got all the fans, but I want to talk family. Sorry. Because like, yeah, I yeah. know it, it's uh, Italians, right? Family is everything. You know, Sunday oh, suppers, yeah. the whole bit. Like, what's it, yeah. what's it going to mean to be there with your family at this moment, at this really cool juncture in your life? It's a bittersweet thing. Because like I said, my grandfather passed away a couple years ago. So he's not going to be, a, he's not alive to see this. The biggest achievement I, I've, I've had so far in CrossFit. My grandmother is alive. My father came here by himself. Uh, he came here by himself without even a job offer. So it was a crazy, a, cra a crazy journey that I could never experience um, or fully understand. But it is family is everything and it and it simultaneously pains me that they can't be here um because i would love for one day to be able to perform in front of them whether they come here or i have to go to italy and and do like maybe the italian throwdown if italian throwdown if you're watching i would love an invite uh it, it is it is a huge thing and i am very much a person that's always been fueled by by family by others i've never considered my journey in crossfit something that i did by myself obviously i show up on the individual leaderboard it's just my name but i think i've made the people that know that have been such a massive impact in my life especially my family they know very very well that i don't believe for a second that i would be where i am without any of them and to have, I have a huge part of my, my mother's side and I have my father and it's going to be live stream. So my grandparents or my, my grandmother and my aunts and uncles can watch it in Italy is going to be, is going to be huge. It's yeah. So I want to leave on this note. I told you before I got on the air that I've never been to California. So yep. my trip to Pasadena to cover this event will be my first time in California. What do I have to do? When, while I'm there? Well, first you have to eat. So I, Korean barbecue, we have Howlin' Ray's Nashville hot chicken. We got everything. You, you, you name it, we got it. We got Nobu in Malibu. I would say the number one thing is do the touristy things. All right. I know most people are like, don't go to a city and do the touristy things. LA is kind of made for the touristy things. You got to do the Hollywood Walk of Fame. You have to see the Santa Monica Pier. You have to go to Venice Beach. These are just things that you won't see anywhere else. Griffith Observatory. When you come down, I'll have it all listed out, and we'll we'll go. We'll take you out. I promise. You you and Wad Zombie, if you're still watching. And so, uh, if I'm coming to K2, mm -hmm. and I want to drop in that weekend, how yep. do I go about that process? Is there a check-in? So yeah, uh, there is on our website, there is a, uh, a the three bar option tab. You just go down to memberships. There's going to be a drop in. Once you uh, pay for your drop in fee, uh, wink, wink, uh, we will get a notification. So we'll know who has already paid. Uh, otherwise you can just show up. Uh, our full schedule is on our website. We don't have a limit on how many we can fit. We have a huge gym and we would love to have everyone that we can, you know, everyone is, is totally welcome. Yeah, I uh, one I've never got to hang out with Nick Wad Zombie. Um, we've just become friends over the internet, so I'm actually awesome. going to meet him for the first time when I'm there because he's awesome. going to be at the event as well. Um, so yeah, maybe we can all hang out and get and then yeah, dude, that'd be awesome. Article, an authentic Italian restaurant. Um, can't remember the name. It it's uh, you said it it, it reminds you of home. The Italian restaurant? Yes. It's called, uh, it's called Uovo. U-O-V-O, which is just the Italian word for egg. And they ship their, they, they make and ship the pasta directly from Italy. And I will 100% take you there. Uh, that's where my girlfriend and I went on our first date. And uh, we're still together. So, you know, the food must be good. <laughs> Uovo. Is that how it's pronounced? Yeah, that's actually really good. Yeah. Oh, awesome. So Wad Zombie actually works in LA. He works for the city of LA and he said oh. he's going to make sure that your storm drain outside of K2 stays clean. Ah, heck yeah, man. I'm looking at it right now. Pretty dirty. 
for doing that. <laughs> Thanks, man. I appreciate awesome. that. Um, so with that, Alessandro, this has been awesome getting to know you. Can't oh, wait likewise. to meet you in person. Uh, what's you said top 30. What yep. do the next five weeks look like for you? The next five weeks, uh, so far, Mayhem has been putting us through a lot of odd objects. Um, I'm very lucky, again, that K2 has everything from ski ergs to echo bikes, concept two bikes, peg boards, handstand ramps. So all the stuff that they've been programming, the higher advanced gymnastics, I've been able to do. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to a heavy barbell, barbell cycling, and throw in some pegboards because I do them at least a couple times a week. So I'm, I'm excited for all of that kind of stuff um, because I'm, I'm very lucky to have all of them at my disposal. Oh, I, uh, I muted myself. Oh. I muted myself. Sorry, I was, I was like, I don't know I've, if something happened on I've my end. I've gone almost a full week without muting myself. And here I did it. Dang it. Ah, it's all good, man. Um, no, they make fun of me. The, the, my audience makes fun of me for the mute thing. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, man. <laughs> I, I don't no, even know okay. if I could mute myself right now. Um, but anyway, Wad Zombie says he just became an instant fan. And what oh, I was going to say is I, I have two and oh, thank man, you. I'm going to be rooting for you when I get there. Uh, can't wait to see you oh. live. Thank you so much. I for appreciate that. On, Alessandro. Yeah. And, uh, we'll see you in Pasadena, man. Yeah, seriously. DM me, Wad Zombie. DM me. I'll send you my phone number. We'll get some food. We'll get some pasta. I'll, I'll make sure you guys are full. All right. And everybody in the chat, thank you so much for jumping in and contributing. With that, we'll see everybody next time on the Clydesdale Media Podcast. <laughs>